So imagine this guy is one of your elderly grandparents or whatever. Not feeling super youthful anymore, a little bit hunched over, kind of like that, hands on the knees just to stay straight. And then, woo, big gust of wind comes by or someone shoves them or they just tip over under their own volition. How scary would that moment be before this invention? Pop! Safety! Those airbags look like you could just cuddle up and go to bed right after you fell over. And listen, this could work for young people too. Babies, cows, anything really that we want to be protected when it tips over. Think about the NBA. The number one risk of injury is a bad fake flop. This could change the way the NBA works forever. And look at these other novel use cases. Misty D. Sunshine, lots of flags. Asks for a friend of hers if it can be used for drunk people. Well, why not, you know? Last call, they could just deliver these to the bars, be extra revenue and protect people. Imagine knocked out after a bar fight, beer bottle over your head or pool stick or whatever. And even though it looks silly, it could literally save people's lives. So I'm, I'm really in favor of it. Cool invention. So back to artificial intelligence, but this time applied to the old classic sprinkling system, we might have a much better and much safer future when it comes to fires, thanks to artificial intelligence. So it's basically a hose mounted to the ceiling, but the artificial intelligence has a temperature gauge and when it reaches 165 or above, it knows to first turn it on and direct it towards the source of the heat. So at this point, you're probably confused, like why are these guys setting a fire indoors and like what's going on with the wheelbarrow, all that stuff. So get back everybody, but not too far because it's going to direct its sprinkling right to the fire. Toning in on it feels the heat. I mean, I, I don't know if it has to be like straight up firefighter level water, but that's what that is. And it also got me thinking about what are robot firefighters actually going to look like in the future? Because if you have an autonomous fire truck, say a few of them that are actually bringing water, or you just have humanoid robots that are going through buildings completely fireproof, like that is going to be a game changer. You know, train stations, airports like this, they could have robots that just stand in the closet. And if there's a fire, they just jump into action. And I can also imagine all sorts of like water delivery devices that aren't just the traditional fire hydrant. Autonomous fire trucks with these huge tanks of water that could just be like rotating around or filling up in wherever the local like places to fill up and bringing it to where the fire is. Artificial intelligence and robotics is going to upend fire departments. That's, that's gonna happen. Hey, if you're looking for a new friend to help out in the kitchen, I've got the robot for you. You can mount this sort of upper half humanoid robot like in front of your sink and it does the dish is for you. It's not a special dishwashing machine either. These are just straight up human-like hands that can handle all of the intricacies of the dishes and the towels and all that stuff. And then just mount another one on an empty part of your counter, throw a coffee maker in there, whatever else you need to do. You can fold laundry, whatever you can imagine. Check out the dish towel folding. This is the highlight of the video. And you might be worried, like what if it swings around and like breaks my body? Well, look what happens when you just push on the arm. It just gets out of your way and it doesn't seem to be like too powerful powerful to knock you over. I don't know why I always feel so weird when we push these robots around. Like they're definitely coming for revenge. That arm's gonna be like, smack that guy back one day. Then he's gonna fall over and the airbag is gonna protect him. The robot's gonna be like, hmm. Okay, so notice how that guy in the background's moving his arm in the exact same way the robot is. So that's him teaching the robot how to maneuver. So in your house, you might say, here's the coffee machine. You'd put your arm in this VR system and you would actually move the arms for it, make a copy, and then it would like pick up on the details. That'd be fun because you could have it like high five you when you're done with the dishes, root for the big game, tell people when they offer, no, 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 I got it. Just leave it right there, please. Let's talk about a new form factor for drones that is blowing my mind. And this is actually the second time this month this has happened. If you remember my previous videos where I showed that quadcopter where the, basically the, the wings just bent down, they had circular things around them and those became wheels. And I was like, Psh. it's like from RC car to drone to RC car and then all these weird hybrids in between. I was like, whoa, that's a huge improvement. And then I saw this, it's a straight up soccer ball. It can just roll around and use the fans inside or just take off. Now that's a crazy form factor. So like imagine just going up rocks, the wheels and stuff would have trouble, but this thing could either fly or just kind of push itself with enough air to like roll the soccer ball up the hill. There's just something about it too, where it looks kind of safer. Like if you just ram that at somebody, it's not like the blades are, you know, not protected from all angles, especially if you put like a fencing material or some kind of mesh around it that was like two, that had holes that were too small for even a finger to fit through. And the material that flexes on the outside, that can also act as a shock absorber, just like a basketball or a soccer ball. You know, just bouncing around. That'll also protect the drone for a lot longer. If you have a hamster,
monster, get ready for jealousy level 10. Dude, how fun would it be if Mark Rober got a hold of one of these things and like made it actually look like a soccer ball and then just like kick the craziest goal that would like zip around all the defenders and just go in in the top corner where like it couldn't be reached by the goaltender. Oh, that'd be my dream to work with him one day on something like that. But look, I just gotta grow the channel day by day to get there. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. My next goal is to get to 6,000 subscribers. That would be another huge milestone. So thanks. Now this looks a lot like the American Boston Dynamics Big Dog, but this one's got a few more tricks up its sleeve. And the first one is price. These are actually being made for less than $3,000 US. And they have nearly the same capabilities and in some ways they look way smoother. So Unitree Robotics just launched this new four-legged friend. It's called the Ultra Tree Go To. So embodied with all sorts of artificial intelligence tools inside. And it's literally a master at yoga. This could be a yoga teacher for other dogs and or humans. Although the spinning LiDAR thing down by the mouth kind of weirds me out a little bit, but I guess that was a design choice. Looks like a garbage disposal or something, like it's gonna rip my hand up. All right, so let's see what this ultra pastel, super bright, friendly little video looks like. Oh, look at that, it can do shake. That's cute. Oh yeah, put your head down for a little pet. Why not? You know, coming home after work from a long day, it's great to be greeted with that kind of love. That twisty thing is different. That's, that is, that makes it a little more animal-like. Whoa, look at those cameras on the side of its body. And wow, look at the way it can just kind of twist in and then move to avoid that tree. There it goes. Slow motion looks pretty agile. I love this part too. This guy just throws out some parkour out of nowhere. Could be a golden retriever's best buddy. Oh, what's this? They could put a robotic arm on its back? That looks way too much like a military weapon. Oh, it's picking up the garbage. Okay, that's very kind of it. This is getting so weird. Now, take a photo of my outfit. As you wish, cheer. Now take a photo of my outfit. As, as you, you wish, wish. Now go take a photo of my ex-girlfriend. As you wish. Shut up. Is it going down the steps? Is a handstand? The end is near for us. So this robotic hand that actually uses soft plastic and different air compressions to twist and move the hand in a more human-like way is something we should really start thinking about because it could really be an amazing way to build a very like human-like motion robot in the future. Because when I saw it at first, I thought, okay, that's just another kind of actuator. It's not that big of a deal. But then the more I thought about the way machine learning works. You could make the compartments, the little air pockets, very small in a hand like this. There could be a complicated network of the way air could move from compartment to compartment. And then instead of having a programmer or trying to figure out what kind of algorithm you'd actually use to make the hand work, you use machine learning, a large neural network, and you just give it examples. And the same way that it can create a latent space for text in the way that the GPT models work, it can come up with some hyper-dimensional understanding of what exactly we're doing when and we move our hands. I don't know, you always think of just like metal digits and like little actuators where all the joints are and stuff, but this uh, this could really be a way that a robotics company could jump ahead of the competition. Like it'd be much higher risk, but if you actually pulled that off, every other robotics company would be set up so differently and you would have the special software that understood that kind of, uh, kind of a motion. And the final product might have all sorts of different use cases where you just don't want these sort of metal robots going in. I mean, you can just imagine how the air would flow through it. It's so interesting. This YouTube channel called Pro Robotics uploaded a sick compilation of robots from the ICRA conference. These are the most cutting edge robots in the world as of today. Okay, so this souped up kind of mech warrior looking thing is actually mostly for entertainment and art and music. So the way he's moving creates a unique sound, which is very, I guess, entertaining to these people. You know what, it kind of sounds like Anna Kendrick's Cup song where it's like, dude, you know, I, I don't want to sing it, but you know, that sound is like, he could do that with those fingers. Maybe he could do hyper cups on it. That'd be sick too. All right, check out this direct drive robot. This thing is like a super fast hopping frog and I am fascinated by it. So it's like a Segway, but it's got these crazy jumping springs in it. Do you see that jump? Just imagine it like hop, hop up on my lap, little thing. It's like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay, so check this out. It's a 3D printing drone. The accuracy and battery power that it would take to actually just have a drone hovering there is something that I had never thought of before. But if a 3D thing can be printed 
with a drone, you could do it outside, and I guess drones could just cycle in and out, or maybe somehow you could give it constant power if it was contained in an area. That's pretty interesting. I mean, you think the wind would blow it around, but you know, where AI is just starting to catch up, and we're figuring out all those little details as it corrects for the micro errors, like precise and accurate these drones could be. And maybe it just holds a little bit of material, or there's just a hose that gives it power and material, and it just flies to whatever size it needs to make the object. Then we can have much, much, much bigger 3D objects. We're not gonna leave you without a Boston Dynamics robot because they're always pushing the cutting edge of what's viral on YouTube. Check this out. It is the literal ninja of robots. Sense it. Dude, that jump twist, the kick up, the double twist, the arms wide, sticks the landing, and could like punch through a wall while I did it, you know? Help me get to 6,000 subscribers, smash that subscribe button.